We're back with the roundtable and talking what else? A little politics here. Lena, you are now the co-chair of finance for the Michigan Republican Party. How How is the fundraising going? It's going extremely well. We're engaging, of course, the donors that have been uh, showing up before, but we're also engaging a whole new group of new donors who are activated, who are very upset about the current administration and what's happened to our to our country. Um, so I'm very optimistic about that. We're going to see some positive results soon. Well, let's talk about one race that is getting tons of attention and going to get more. That is this open Senate seat with Alyssa Slotkin, Mike Rogers. Uh, I think uh, Slotkin is spending a lot of money, as is Rogers. She has a bunch of killer ads, and I think polling shows her up slightly when you take out the mar even with the margin of error. She's up a little bit here, and what do you think Mike Rogers needs to do between now and November? Well, the current polling is fairly remarkable, given how much the Republicans are outspent in the U.S. Senate race. Um, Mike Rogers, if he continues to demonstrate his leadership, be clear about his policies and how he will lead, I think his message is resonating with the Michigan voter. And, Dee, how do you see it on the flip side here? I, with think, I think Alyssa's got a lot of momentum. I think she's got a lot of money that she's raising. I think if she sticks to her plan and, and continues on, her ads are very hard hit. Yeah. She'll be fine. Yeah. And? Yeah, I, I think it's interesting that, that Slotkin has a money advantage. I think Rogers has an issue advantage in terms of the issues that are important to the public. Uh, economy, immigration, that's and that's that's where the, the Democrats are on, on the defensive right now. D, the enthusiasm is riding high with the Dems right now. Um, Harris is raising ungodly amounts of money here and has been since she got in the race. There's a wave, a Democratic wave going across the country as she's going around with all these events here. How is it possible to keep this momentum going? What does she need to do to keep the momentum between now and November? I think that she keeps doing what she's doing. I think that, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, I think that she's got a ton of momentum people are excited her message of hope and positiveness and what's right about and the, the country flip, and the flip side is connecting with people with that the flip side is is that there is a silent majority in this country and donald trump's message about faith family and freedom growing our economy securing our borders addressing skyrocketing inflation these are the messages that are resounding with voters and i think with a ton of hard work will be successful in november and I know we've got the candidates coming into Michigan it seems every week. You know, Trump's coming in twice this week, and I'm sure that Harris and, and friends are coming in this week here. Question for you, as someone who's a political observer watching this, is there a saturation point where people stop paying attention because they're here virtually every other day? Uh, yes and no. It depends on who we're talking about, right? I think the base, these visits uh, that from the candidates and their surrogates really aimed at the base to keep that energy up, as you were mentioning. I think the, the, the middle of the road voter, the, the independent voter, moderate voter, persuadable voter, whatever we want to call them, they... They're on the periphery, right? So they're not paying as much attention, uh, but they'll start here over the next month or so. So in terms of the states that really ultimately this is going to boil down to, the fact they keep coming here, Michigan, mm -hmm. Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, mm -hmm. Ohio, Ohio, Ohio. Ohio. Arizona. Arizona. Ohio's All right. Well, state. that's going to have to be the last word for the moment right. here. The but Luke. speaking of that, <laughs> before we wind it down, I wanted to add a footnote about all the things going on in this election and this week's Kane commentary. In professional football, the Super Bowl occurs once a year, and it's a spectacle watched by over 100 million viewers. In the 2024 presidential campaign, there have been, so far at least, two Super Bowl-like debates watched by the largest amount of Americans ever to tune in. Former President Donald Trump has played in both, and irrespective of your political perspective, be it Democrat, Republican, or Independent, it's pretty hard to argue his record isn't one and one. Trump resoundingly defeated President Biden in June in one of the most anticipated political moments in recent memory. That is until last week's event. The 46th president was horrible that night and led to the end of a five-decade-long career of public service. On Tuesday, Trump squared off against Vice President Harris. And again, no matter your politics, it's hard to have watched that and not declare Harris the winner. At least poll after poll continues to show. Still, the headline here truly is polls don't vote. People do. And one debate performance, the first time between these two candidates who had actually met, isn't going to decide what is and will remain an incredibly close race. The contest for Americans could not be clear. These two folks couldn't be more different if they tried. 
There's about, what, 50 days or so left, folks, and or even less if you're going to vote early. But, uh, yes, uh, it's going to soon be time to make your voice heard. And that's it for the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you guys for being here. Going to be a bumpy ride between now and November <laughs> here. So I appreciate you doing it. Thanks to you at home, and we'll see you again next Sunday for Michigan Matters. Michigan Matters. Michigan Matters. <laughs> Have a good week.